Another effect of digitalization is the possibility to undertake extensive surveillance. And people say that uh, in the digital age, we live in a digital panopticum, a panopticum where everybody can be seen as the idea of having a prison, for example, where a single watchman can watch hundreds of prison inmates without them knowing when or if they are being watched. So, so this is this kind of reference. And this is a very long debate. Uh, and the first vision of the information age or the information society actually does not come from an academic or an entrepreneur or policymaker. It comes from a novelist. In 1948, the novelist George Orwell wrote a book, which he called 1984, in which he describes a future society in which a mix of government and private corporations <clears throat> rose up and saw themselves as the guardian of democracy. And they used informational means, uh, information technology back in the days, they weren't digital yet, uh, in order to safeguard, de safeguard democracy in the society. The result of that being in this book, that as Joel Orwell puts it, by comparison with that existing today, all the tyrannies of the past were half-hearted and inefficient because a complete informational control or tyranny could lead to much more effective uh, control and surveillance. For example, the phrase, Big Brother is watching you, comes from this book. So Big Brother, that's what the surveillance uh, machinery was called. And nowadays we have, of course, a very hotly debated uh, discussion about the right balance between privacy and surveillance and the safeguarding, especially of security against attacks, against terrorist attacks, especially after 9-11. Many security, security agencies in the United States, intelligence services, rose up and embraced digital technologies in order to intensify their surveillance. For example, as has been revealed by Edward Snowden, the National Security Agency for seven years undertook a bulk collection of all American phone records. It means it was recorded if one American called another one for, for seven years completely with the justification being that this might help the NSA to prevent future terrorist attacks. Now, after these revelations, the deputy director of the NSA was asked how many terrorist attacks they could successfully prevent based on this insight. And he said, well, that it might have maybe helped them to stop one San Diego taxi driver from sending a few thousand dollars to a terrorist group in Somalia. And they said, well, and something else? He said, not really. No. And so many people were really outraged that seven years, a really profound intrusion into people's privacy for maybe preventing taxi drivers sending a few thousand dollars. So the right balance between privacy intrusion, simply because it's digitally possible, simply because we can live and we do live in a digital panopticon where all of this is possible. The fact that we should also do that and where's the right balance between giving up your privacy and strengthening security. This is really a, an open debate um, and everybody is welcome to join at this point. So-called whistleblowing is another result of a combination of several characteristics of digitalization, including the digital footprint, timeless time, a death of distance, poor directionality. Okay, so what is it? Whistleblowing refers to officially to the disclosure by a person, usually an employee in a government agency or private enterprise, to the public or to those in authority of mismanagement, corruption, illegality, or some other wrongdoing. And there is a whistleblower act that protects uh, people who do whistleblowing, who basically blow the whistle to say, well, here in my organization, something illegal is going on. And they are protected by, by this law. And there is a, a government protection program. Uh, and if you see over, especially over the last decade or so, whistle name number of cases received by the US government whistleblower protection program has increased tremendously. And there is an interesting uh, correlation that goes hand in hand with the increase of the usage of digital tools in the American society. Uh, there have been some very famous cases and some also some platforms strategically designed for whistleblowing. For example, WikiLeaks is a platform where people anonymously can send whistleblower insights uh, 
and publish them there. And in some cases, there were some borderline discussions between is that is that whistleblowing or is that giving away actually secrets? Uh, Chelsea Manning, uh, a, a former soldier of the of the United States, uh, has been charged with 35 years of prison because of revealing and publishing secrets, several kinds of secrets, for example, about the Iraq war through uh, these kind of what are called whistleblowing uh, platforms. And of course, why was that possible? Because digital information leaves this footprint. Uh, it can be simply copy and pasted. Uh, there's polydirectional access to these digital repositories. Another very famous case is Edward Snowden, which many people also say it was completely illegal. He revealed state secrets. Um, he, he copied between, it's estimated between 50 and 200,000 documents, and many of them considered classified state secrets, and simply revealed them because they were in digital format and this was actually quite easy to simply copy paste economies of scale. They were stored there, they were stored for a long time, maybe some of them even forgotten that they were there. So digitalization made that possible. Now, the, the intelligence community also confronted with this flood of publication of state secrets, um, they had this following very interesting explanation. So the former director of the CIA said, well, after 9-11, after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, we were accused of not being willing to share information rapidly and fastly enough. And we've pushed that very far forward. It means like you guys accuse us, we don't share information. Well, we have a lot of information. It's all in digital format. We share it. We give many people polydirectional access to these databases and let's share among the agencies. Now, he also said that those of us who've been in this business long enough knew that this day of leaking will come. Knew that because we'd remove all the watertight doors on the ship. Once it started taking on water, it would eventually be in trouble. So actually, knowing about digitalization and knowing that they basically opened the floodgates, they knew that some people eventually will, will take it out. It also shows you that, well, Digital information is sometimes a double-edged sword. It allows you to share and to network very fast and with many people, but maybe at one point, some people might be interested and there might be legal reasons why we do not want to share it. And also digital solutions and legal frameworks still have to be invented to assure to take advantage of the benefits of digitalization and to minimize the drawbacks and the dangers. And finally, algorithmification is a significant driver of this ongoing human-machine merger, this always tighter collaboration between human intelligence and machine intelligence. Algorithms nowadays take a lot of decisions. For example, which kind of in information we are exposed to on the internet or in social networks, these decisions are taken by algorithms. Algorithms also substitute routines that previously have been carried out by humans, be it in the workforce, be it in, in, in shopping, be it in also together with robotics in industries. But the effects of algorithmification go way beyond economics or the industries or playing chess. And uh, it can have profound effect, effects even in things like finding the love of your life. One in three marriages nowadays in the United States is produced through online dating, web services. It's the most common way people get to know each other and eventually marriage besides the introduction of a common friend. And uh, check out this uh, interesting experience here that Amy had and how she collaborated, how she started to combine her human intelligence with the machine intelligence. And it gives you an idea about how powerful it can be for in the most with the most unexpected results, such as finding the love of your life.